So here's the plan. We're here in Silver Creek. And we'll drive over to Elby on the 7, take the 706 across to Ashford, and then the, here's the Mount Rainier National Park entrance. Probably do some hikes around here, go up this way to the Grove of the Patriarchs, which is a really, like, the most popular hike. you guys the uh, road trip to Mount Rainier has been postponed <laughs> but just a little bit I got all the way up like 40 miles up to the entrance where the, the, the line started to form to get into the Mount Rainier and uh, I had to clutch in and out and in and out because I'm in line just going up beep 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 and something happened to the clutch a pedal just went all the way down to the floor <laughs> so I was right next to another road and I got out I pushed it over and I tightened up the clutch cable because it, it seemed like it, it and once I tightened up the clutch cable it was back to where it used to be and I thought well maybe it slipped but the pedal felt really soft and uh, so it wasn't the cable the cable didn't uh, it feels like the clutch disc um, pressure plate maybe lost some springs or something because it's like super loose like check this out so we come over here so I got it I got it all tightened up right here I got I got enough where it, it hits right there it, it's hitting the bearing but I can push it with my hand like it's super soft so it's like super soft right here and it used to be I mean I could never do it by hand so it looks like I'm gonna go ahead and pull the engine and just take a look at the pressure plate here in this campground right here that I'm at so I have a, I pushed it all the way back over here because I had it right here but you can see this is poison oak so this whole park is like totally surrounded with poison oak like over here you can tell because it usually it's a three leaf and one side, this usually the second leads back here are one is rounded and the other is more jagged, like right here. A perfect circle here, perfect here, and then jagged right there. And that's how you know it's poison oak. Okay, so instead of a road trip, <laughs> this is a how to, uh, how to pull an engine in an RV park. So let's just take it, let's just see uh, how long it takes to pull an engine. First thing I'm gonna do, uh, there's only four bolts, I'm gonna disconnect the battery. So, which I already did technically, so I disconnected the battery. Uh, there's really not much to it. Disconnect the battery, disconnect the fuel, uh, disconnect a couple of wires, like maybe four wires, and there's four bolts holding the transmission on. You pull it out, and that's it. Uh, I do have an external oil cooler, so I may have to uh, pull some oil lines. Uh, just, you know, don't get anything anywhere. But on these, you know, there's no water. so it's a lot easier to pull a VW engine than it is to pull a uh, water cooled because I don't have any radiator fluid. First thing I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to pull the bumper, pull off this thing, and then I can really get into it. Okay, step one, pull the bumper. <laughs> Let's time it. Uh, it is 1230 because I left for Mount Rainier around eight o'clock, <laughs> got all the way there, drove an hour there, out <laughs> back. It's 1230, pulling the engine. The next thing you got to take off is this front thing so you can just pull the engine right out. It's really just like four screws and a couple little things there. And it will just come right up. There you go. And then the engine is totally exposed. You just take off four more bolts. This whole thing will come out. Okay, what's next? <laughs> uh, I'm going to disconnect the fuel line right here. 
and I'm going to go ahead and take the oil uh, cooler lines off and then there's just like a couple electrical to the alternator and to the coil and just put the electrical aside <laughs> all right so there's a lot of wires in here what I did is I took a board and I sort of did an electrical diagram I'll do a little bit more uh, I took off the alternator wires up here these three just set them aside over there I got the oil pressure take that off I got it written down and then the coil wire stuff and that's it I'm just going to take the whole coil off see if I can't keep the wires on it and just move it around move it out of the way okay move all the electrical to the other side I got all this distributor and the choke just move it all and you know the RPM gauge this choke there uh, what is the, put it all over here Okay, that's all the electrical right there. And now I'm gonna disconnect the oil and then take off the tranny bolts. I got the oil hoses off, I just tied them up real high. And then I put a, a spare hose on the ones down here, just in case. Let's see how we doing. Uh, the time is 1.25. It's only been like an hour and I've been kind of goofing off a little bit too. <laughs> Everything's disconnected fuel electrical and the only thing left is the four bolts on the transmission so let's do that now we don't even have to take the starter off so i haven't even climbed under the car yet i'm not even really that dirty <laughs> let's take the bolts off it looks like to get to the back ones i need a big long extension with a swivel 15 millimeter and just a 17 millimeter i got everything loose so now i'm going to go ahead and get a jack underneath the engine before I take all the bolts out because I don't want it to fall on me <laughs> which it which it won't because it's sitting on the pilot shaft but you want to take the weight off just in case okay we got all the transmission bolts off there was just four you know I had this engine out not too long ago when, when I built the car so all that stuff was broken loose uh, okay we got the jack under there now good thing we did because it did kind of like fall when you get them all off just kind of slack it just a little bit and then we'll go ahead and pull it if I had a rolling jack I would like a floor jack but I just have my my tire jack here because so I'm just traveling so I think uh, I don't know what's gonna happen we'll just try to pull it now these weigh only about 300 pounds but I want to pull the jack with it Ooh. Okay. Ooh, all right. This, if you know if it's gonna roll, it's not gonna fall because it's like rocking inside. So as long as that jack doesn't like fall, we're okay. Ooh, I think we're out. I think we're out. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring it down. Ooh. Just support it. come all the way out I didn't even pull it that far I didn't pull it that far okay here we go these really aren't that heavy they're about I think they're about 300 pounds so nothing major I'm gonna take it all the way to the ground because I don't have the parts and it'd probably be sitting a couple of days because I got to order them off the internet so because I don't have a car to go get them and I think the closest park store is probably 25 miles away I can because I don't want it to drop too far. Just balancing it on the, this little jack. Okay. 
and you're probably noticing that the exhaust is broke. <laughs> I've been driving, I bottomed out and I broke the exhaust tips off. So I've just been driving along. It's been kind of loud. So now's actually a good time to get, uh, I'm gonna order a new exhaust probably at the same time. Because while it's out, I might as well put a new exhaust on it. Okay. That's as far down as it's gonna go, guys. And, oh, I think we'll just go ahead and roll it out. And try not to get my fingers. All right, uh, that's the speedometer cable. Oh, yep, yeah, the bearing. I can see it already, you guys. Okay, so let's see what we got here and see if we did this for nothing or if something happened all right come on in guys so let's take a look you can see that the clutch bearing totally came off its rocker there it's been rubbing because it's metal to metal right here and this is off its the spring or something came off so the, the clutch bearing you know slipped inside of it so no matter how far I pushed, it was not going to hit the clutch. So definitely I lost the bearing. Okay, so I guess the procedure from here is uh, the bearing is frozen. So the bearing's locked up and that's what started it. And then it stripped, I got the inner race. It looks like there's some oil in there. So I'm gonna get a new oil seal for probably the engine and the tranny. And I'm gonna go ahead and replace the clutch regardless, just because it was kind of like grabbing. I think I actually got it hot. And ever since then, it's been actually grabbing, not slipping, but like boom, 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 like grab. I've had it out, I don't know, we've, I've just been cleaning it and uh, checking part numbers and stuff, but I never did check the time. But it is currently 2.20. What time did we start? What was it 12.30? Uh, yeah, about an hour and a half, and I was just kind of goofing off looking for tools and everything else. So really, I think you can pull one of these in like an hour. <laughs> no problem. I guess while I've got the engine out, it's a good time to go ahead and change the uh, transmission oil, because I've been meaning to do it forever. I've been carrying around the oil for like months now. Um, so yeah, while it's out, I can really, I can just squeeze right in here. I don't have to get underneath it. So I pulled it out. So when you fill it up, I just, uh, let's see, I got some 7590. I just put my, my hand, my finger over the tip, slip it in there. And fill it up. What? <laughs> I'm just taking a little break. <laughs> I'm still working. Fine, I'll get back to work. Hey guys, uh, I got my 200 horsepower uh, air compressor running. I'm gonna charge it up and I got it. I got in a couple parts. I got in, because I can see oil all over the place, I got a rear main seal and the little O-ring that goes around the flywheel. And I also got a brand new uh, throwout bearing, which is the main issue because it was frozen. I have it blocked up here so that the oil goes this way because when I pull the flywheel, I don't want oil coming out. And let's see if it'll come off. These things are on there about 250 foot-pounds of torque. So hopefully it'll come off. Okay, that was really on there. Yeah, it's really wet in here. There's oil all over the place. Uh, it's probably, probably from in here. It looked like the O-ring is even in here. So it was put together wrong, that's why it's leaking. There's no seal in here at all. I don't see it anywhere. Yeah. So it was leaking because there was no oil seal in the flywheel. You guys, always remember to put this little, little O-ring in the flywheel. Alright, got 
got this clean. I'm just gonna take this polycarbide uh, sanding disc here. And I like to scratch up the, uh, the flywheel uh, clutch place. That's super nice. Okay. Put the new O-ring in because you guys, there wasn't an O-ring in here, which is why it was leaking. A little bit of grease so that it doesn't get pinched. Put the seal in. Okay, it's ready. Okay, we got the seal in, we got the O-ring in. Actually, the, the, there was an O-ring in here. It was just so rock hard and squared off that I didn't even see it. Uh, put some new grease, because there is some uh, bearings in here, needle bearings. Uh, Regrease that. parts I got the engine all together I got it in the car uh, I didn't film it but I timed it it took me about two hours to put it all back together it's a little bit more difficult trying to get it up by your solo so I thought I would share with you what are my contingencies for breaking down how do I deal with breakdowns on the road when I'm in older vehicles I have a 1962 VW bu bus that you know I rebuilt it but not everything is new. It's got an old engine and an old transmission. Uh, and I'm in a 1978 city bus, you know, a, a school bus conversion. 1978, uh, stuff breaks down. How do I deal with that? Number one, I need a reliable source for parts. Um, when it comes to the VW, um, you know, you can buy stock parts, you can buy uh, high performance parts. And there's different years and different things, and, and I don't know necessarily what those are. I, I've had three VWs. This is my third one. But when it comes to parts, I need somebody who's been in the business who knows. In fact, it broke down. Uh, I called the closest part store I could. It was 25 miles away and to see if I could get a clutch and a bearing kit from them. Uh, and you know what they said? <laughs> they said they only took cash and they don't deliver. So what are you going to do if you break down and you don't have any transportation? You know, I rely on shipping. You know, I have it shipped to wherever I want. Uh, so what I do, my go-to place for a VW is Busteration there in Lake Havasu City. Uh, that's Ronnie and, and his wife. Uh, I like them because they are a owner-ran company. He owns the place, he runs it, he builds the engines, he does everything right there in Lake Havasu uh, is where he is located. And so when I call, I'm talking to an owner. I'm not talking to a kid or an employee. I'm talking to an owner who knows what he's doing and I know when he ships me the parts, when I get it, it's going to be there. So have a reliable source for getting parts on the road. And of course he ships, he knows when I'm calling because I'm always in different places. He's like, great, where am I shipping it to now? <laughs> And I've gotten stuff from him all over the place, and he's shipped me uh, anywhere I am, no problem. Uh, so I like that company, Busteration. Uh, and for uh, my, uh, my my bus, I usually use, uh, I think, ABC Bus in L.A., uh, Bakersfield, um, for all of the my city bus stuff. They're my go-to. If I can't find it in an app or something, you always have need somebody who can who can ship. Just know your vehicles and know who was going to ship you stuff. Uh, number two, I travel with as many tools as I can. <laughs> B 
because you never know. I have air tools. I've got everything, you know, like... I've got, I used to travel with my big old snap-on box when I was towing the, my trailer. I have, I have my huge snap-on box just full of tools. Uh, I'm not towing my trailer anymore because I'm towing the VW bus. So I've, I've put everything in boxes now. It's a little bit more difficult to find. Uh, number three is I would say what makes me feel more comfortable is having some kind of a towing insurance. Because I used to travel in this you know, in my, my bus, in my city bus, and I did blow an engine in this bus a long time ago, and it cost me a thousand dollars to tow it. So it can get highly stressful, like, oh, my, I hope nothing breaks today, you know, on a moving day. Uh, so I, I have uh, Good Sam's uh, towing insurance and tire. I actually blew a tire on this bus, on my school bus here, uh, in Carlsbad Caverns. Uh, I called, uh, you know, Good Sam's. Of course, I was on the phone for an hour, you know, and, and, but they, they did find somebody. But by the time they found somebody, I had already found somebody. <laughs> but at least I know that if I have to be towed, that, you know, I have the insurance for that. If I was just in my VW, I don't really think I would even have towing insurance because uh, it's not that expensive to tow a regular car. <laughs> But when it is a motorhome, a motorhome that weighs, you know, 32,000 pounds, it costs $1,000 to tow it anywhere. Where a regular car, I could be towed 65 bucks. But when it comes to the VW, I actually have a tow bar on it and a full-out towing system. So if I did break down, I mean, I have a tow bar and all I'd have to do is wave down a regular truck to tow me. I don't even need a tow truck. If I can get somebody with a truck or a car that has a two inch receiver on it, they could tow me into town. <laughs> so I, if I just had the VW, I probably wouldn't even have insurance. Uh, number four is my contingency plans. Okay, what if I break down on the road on a moving day? Uh, number one, I look at, can I fix it? Uh, what is it that broke? And maybe I could just get towed to like an Apple or something and get a part and put that on. If I know it's serious, like, and then I know it's going to take me some time to fix or something, my uh, contingency plan number two would be have it towed or pushed or whatever to an RV park and stay in that RV park for a week or two weeks or a month, however long it takes to get the parts. If I need an engine or something like that, or like if I need an engine, I would probably be just towed to an RV park and I would stay in the RV park until I got the engine and I got the parts and I, and I put it in. That's what I would do. Uh, worst case scenario, if I blew, say, an engine on the motorhome, <laughs> it might take me a really long time to find it to find a used one or something, to have this one rebuilt. It's a new engine. I put it in about four years ago. To have this engine rebuilt, it's a Caterpillar diesel. It costs $18,000 to have a rebuilt engine. If I got into a situation like that and I couldn't find a rebuilt and I knew it was going to cost a lot of money, the contingency plan for that would be I would have the motorhome towed to a storage yard. Just tow it to a storage yard and, st and, and store it. You know, and I'd just come back to it a couple months later if I had to. That worst case scenario. And I could store it in a storage facility for like 40 bucks a month. So those are my, that's my, my plan for dealing with breakdowns uh, on the road. So I hope that helps you guys, uh, you know, have a plan so that you not get all hyped up if something breaks when you're on the road. I'll see you next time.